Chairman, if you want to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Yes, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, Robert, can you read off the names of the people that are here just to document the quorum? I can't see all of them. Um, if you go to your view, as, as far as the box, um, you can go ahead and there's a little grid box and you can see a lot of people or you can scroll through, but we have Councilmember Davitt, we have Molly Rose, Greg Anderson, Kathleen, um, Roger Gallen, uh, Frank Krenz, and Lloyd Wolsey. Um, yeah. Wolsey yeah. George uh, Dubois is not here, but I give uh, Kathleen a, a little rub, but it's, uh, it's George. <laughs> okay. Um, good. Oh, I see now I, my arrow got covered up. I, my scrolling arrow just had got covered with something else. I see what it is. Okay, meeting's called to order. Uh, first item, as usual, is um, open forum. If there's any public comment, do we have any public here for a comment? Chairman, I don't see any members of the public present. Okay. That's, I'm surprised at that, but that's good. <laughs> um, and then the minutes we couldn't locate, and I don't know if they ever did. Did they get located? Yeah, they, they, they've been sent. Diane has them, but they, they weren't in. I had sent them before, I thought, but maybe I did not, but she has them now. Okay, okay. Yeah, I knew it was, you were looking for them. But that, so those will have to um, be included in the next, the next meeting's packet then. Um, and new members, uh, we, I think, recognize Molly Rose's resignation letter. And um, we have two applications. One, I, I want to deal with the membership, of course. Uh, Greg Anderson and Liz Andort. Um, do we have any a motion for approval of one of the, the there's one slot open. What was there well, Roger, I think. You know, Greg was a uh, what's it, ex officio or whatever. Well, the right term he, is. He, he was almost a standby member. The definition of ex officio would be someone that was previously on. So Greg, Greg uh, was certainly in there a lot earlier. Has been on, on there, but I think we'd need a formal motion if you want to. I, I have a question. How come you're restricted to? however many, six members instead of seven. I don't know what the count oh, it is. It is seven. So with your, um, see, with your resignation, we have, we have seven with you. And uh, with your resignation, we would have six. So it's uh, always an odd number, most committees. Yeah. Is that yeah. in statute, though, or can we have nine or 11? or? You can have nine. Um, the only problem is, again, getting quorum. Yeah. Because you, you go to four to, to five, uh, yeah. um, and that's always an issue. Um, you know, I'm not sure what your bylaws say, and if George Dubois has attended the last two meetings, but we can also reach out to him. But Liz Ander can be the ex officio member in case there is another vacancy, then she would move into that spot. Liz um, was a formal council member, and she's very involved in the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we if we need a motion, I I move that Greg Anderson uh, be reclassified as a voting member. <laughs> okay. A second for that. I'll second it. Okay. Second by Lloyd. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it's unanimous, and uh, we could reach out to Liz, um, and if she wants to sit in with a committee. Um, the other, as you know, Molly, if we, for some time we had six members and it still took four to get a quorum. Right. So it's nice to have seven because it's still four and it's easier to do. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, first item on the discussion agenda is the sustainability, it's just sustainability program. We talked about that last month and, uh, Lloyd, um, or uh, the, um, volunteered to follow up on some basic information I had, but to follow up on getting more. And uh, Lloyd, would you less like to speak on this issue for us? Your yeah, I, I drilled around and uh, tried to find what I thought would be pertinent examples for the town of Windermere to consider. And uh, Winter Park stood out because their objectives are right in line. I mean, they've, they're on the chain of lakes. 
and they've got a waste management program. They have water supply objectives. They got three, tree protection, wastewater management. And what they did, and there's a link in the document, they, they basically list these, these categories and then describe their existing programs. What's kind of missing in that is what the city of Satellite Beach offers is setting objectives for sustainability. You know, things like uh, by X num by X year, our fleet shall be 30% off fossil. Well, we're, we're direct indirectly on fossil fuels because you got to have energy, you got to have electricity to recharge. But I mean, the, so one of the options would be is looking at Winter Park and then uh, having staff do a workshop because they know the programs better than anyone else on what they're doing and what they can do within their budget limitations and set reasonable objectives for a short term, like three years or a long term, five years, based on budget projections and program plans. The alternative to that is again, stick kind of with Winter Parks template and uh, create what um, wasn't Satellite Beach. Yeah, it was Satellite Beach. They, um, no. Maitland, no, excuse me, Dinellan. Um, one of them, I'll find it here in a minute, actually established a citizens committee to help establish objectives and characterize the programs. Um, that can be a little dangerous because then you've got this heck of a learning curve for whomever's on that committee. And uh, I kind of feel that the, between, and there's so much in Orange County, and Orange County and Orlando just overwhelmed you with the information. And that's gonna, that's kind of, that isn't surprising given the size of their programs and budget. So I guess my recommendation is, is uh, the kind of talk with you, Robert, on is that something that you think that within a reasonable period of time, several months, six months, that, ex that, that, that uh, town staff might take a shot at under each of the objectives, describing programs, and setting short-term and long-term objectives? Is it something you might want us to do with the management of those programs? Or would you lean towards establishing a, a, a different committee, a sustainability committee, almost like a new committee, at least it may not be permanent to take on the task or long range planning in partnership with the town? No more committees. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, with the sustainability programs that you have as far as focus areas, I believe that we can address each and every one of those. And I could write, do a write up on each one of uh, the ones that you had up there as far as energy use, CO2 emissions, um, stormwater treatment and management. We have uh, lakes management consultant, as well as um, we have um, best management practices that we're implementing as well. Water supply, we just have mm -hmm. submitted to Orange County Utilities our water supply plan that takes into account uh, potable water systems, fire flow protection, uh, solid waste management. The only issue that we're really gonna have there is with recycling. Mm -hmm. um, lake, protect lake protection, again, we have a lake protection consultant that's on staff right now. And I do believe that um, we just did a state of the lakes at the January town council meeting. I'll be more happy to share that with you as well. But, um, you know, tree protection, we have the tree board, tree ordinance and wastewater management. Uh, we don't have a wastewater system just yet, but I can do a write up on each and every one of those as far as where we are um, and where we're going. Uh, the only issue I may have with the um, uh, CO2 emissions as far as vehicles and stuff like that is the only real vehicles that we have are with, um, I would say, essential workers or first responders as far as public works and or uh, the police department. Um, and they have to be ready to go if and when there's a hurricane or emergency situation. So I just need to see um, if that's something that they would be able to do. Um, you know, of course, when a storm comes through, electric goes out. So what would you do in that mm -hmm. case? You know, you're gonna have to gas up and stuff like that. So uh, it wouldn't be fully electric, but again, most of the equipment that they use is on gas anyway, so. yeah. Um, but we'll, we, I mean, we can explore. It's not not an issue with that. But I would keep it with LRP. I wouldn't create another committee. Well, I, I agree. And the thing is, would be with you and your management team coming up 
with objectives based on what you see in the next three or five years of which ways the city's going. And the beauty of a plan is plans can be changed. They're not cast, yeah. they're not permanent, and they have to reflect the realities of policy and budget. So uh, however way, and, and in doing this is also voluntary. There's no mandate that we, that, that the town have a sustainability plan. But, you know, Windermere's got a strong reputation of caring about the community and caring about the people and caring about the environment. So it's, it's relevant. It may not be an onerous task. And, you, you know, it's something that, that you as a leader might think that it would be a nice component to uh, your portfolio. I, yeah, think there, no I think there's another uh, possible long term benefit if grant money becomes available for any parts of that. I think uh, you're one step ahead to have you know, a program in place, uh, you know, in, in applying for a grant. And it might be, a, I mean, some of the infrastructure bills supposed to help build, um, you know, electric stations for vehicles, and for instance. And, you know, there may there may be things come along in the future that having a sustainability plan, you know, puts us uh, get a little quicker to put it together on a grant. Well, I would recommend a hybrid of Winter Park and Satellite Beach. And with Satellite Beach having objectives, Winter Park just kind of laid out what we're, what they were doing. Uh, but I think for it to be a true plan, it needs some goals and that allows some guidance on things we might want to achieve within a, you know, a three or five year or 10 year time step. Mm -hmm. it, it should be reviewed also, right? Um, at Robert and his staff put it together, but um, I think you, Long range planning should review it and um, put, give some input as well. Yeah, and then ultimately, I guess, obviously adopted, reviewed, and adopted by the town council. Yes, right. exactly. Just like, just like the comp plan is, like every 10 years, only this is probably <laughs> a little shorter period of time, like you're thinking three, five, 10. Yeah. Yeah, things change so quickly in a lot of these areas. You may not want to go beyond five years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, you, you would. Well, I think Satellite Beach had some longer term, uh, particularly on electrification, I think, and mm. that. But, uh, well, or going carbon neutral, maybe it was some one of them I looked at. But those can be, you know, pushed out as future possibilities. Well, it's impossible to go carbon neutral because you've got to have electricity. So yeah. that's a misnomer. Well, People think they plug in their vehicles and they're not, they aren't having a carbon footprint. That's a bull. You know, to be carbon neutral as a town or like a company, you have to find a way to uh, make up for the carbon you use. Yeah. You know, plant trees or something. Uh, but I don't think we can, you know, no. get into that. I like that idea if the staff and Robert can put a draft together and long range planning could review it, uh, make comments, and then it could. From there, if it needs to go to Parks and Recreation or any other committee, I don't know that it does, but could review it. And, and so then, I have a question: Does the comprehensive plan already cover some of these things, with with goals? Whatever the statute requires, um, we don't really get in too deep. I don't believe, but uh, I have to review it again to take a look at sustainability. But typically, whenever we send a comp plan up, we have to make sure that it meets all the state's goals and objectives, whether it be uh, concurrency management, um, so on and so forth. So uh, again, I would have to take a look at it. Low income housing and things all give us all we yeah, give there's us different problems. there's different elements, and they typically add them, and then sometimes they just take them away. Um, like when they had DCA and then changes to uh, Department of Economic Opportunity, a lot of things changed then. Yeah. Um, so just just to be clear what we're asking Robert and the staff to do, are we asking him to kind of baseline um, in these areas and then we're going to uh, potentially develop goals for reduction or, or changes based on that baseline? Well, I, I don't, I don't know. Count on Robert to answer that one. Yeah, all the items may not have a, a baseline, but it could still have... Some of it's uh, things we're already doing and mm -hmm. to continue. I mean, like uh, even we, um, stormwater management, I think you'd recite what we've done, the financing arrangement we have, you know, on the taxing district and uh, then program moving forward. Yeah. The, the, the discussion from the League of Women's Voters 
and other material basically says you just don't reiterate what you're doing. You reiterate, you you provide that, but you also set goals for doing more. That's right. So that's, yeah. what, that's, I mean, that's what distinguishes a sustainability plan is you're, you're trying to achieve some goals that uh, maybe are going beyond the minimum. Um, that's right. I think part of it is sustaining the good parts you already have, not letting it deteriorate, in other words. Mm -hmm. But that would be what I mean by, you know, you, ha you have to start by reciting what we have and what we're doing. And then, like you say, Floyd, then move to a goal. And then, yeah. I, so we'd come, I think when it gets kind of fine tuned, then it would come back to council for sure. comment, comment and approval. Well, the bones are there with uh, Winter Parks at Lake Beach. Um, all the other ones that you gave as examples, so I'll take a look at those and see if I can draft a, um, a policy based on those um, and then come back to you guys. Great. Okay. Do you want to put a time frame on it, Robert, or I'm not, I'm not pressing for it? It's, it's, it's a hell of a month, um, especially next month because we have the moving into the new facilities yeah. and it's event season, but um, I'll do my best to expedite this. Okay, so maybe we're looking at uh, sometime this spring, March or April, maybe to have it. I would say April. April, right. Okay. We'll have to have a meeting. Oh, okay. Any, um, let's see. I, do we need a mo Do we need a formal motion on this? I don't, I don't know. No, I have direction. I have consent from the, uh, okay. the committee to move forward on this. Just a consent. So we don't need to vote. If any, any other comments about it before we close that item? I think that's a good idea, Lloyd. Okay. No, Go ahead. I said I think it was a really good idea. Lloyd came up with this, and it's it's a good it's a good plan. Yeah, that's actually what I was I was gonna I was gonna say the same thing, Molly. Lloyd, that was that that's great work. I, that that was very uh, very informative, and it, I think it helped us move this thing along much quicker. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, but it wasn't a tremendous amount of hours. I just finally had to get to it because Roger was saying, "Okay, Lloyd, get on it." <laughs> <laughs> Well, it came through the League of Women Voters only in the sense that uh, they were kind of collecting the data from other cities and trying to ask, you know, other cities or towns if they would be interested in implementing that. And uh, I happen to just have a friend who's on either president or on the board of the League of Women Voters, I guess, asked me if uh, we'd be interested. And I said, well, sound... Sounds good as long as it isn't it isn't too much work to put a plan together. So I think that's what we've addressed here. So with Robert's volunteering, it's not very not going to be too much work for me. <laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, I guess the next item, if that's in no more comments on that, would be the boat house discussion. You want. You want to take that before we can switch, uh, Robert? What's your feeling on that before the bridge issue? On uh, um, bridge issue. Uh, yeah, that, that's real short. It's I just wanted to brief everybody. Oh, that's that's a boat dock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not really long range planning, but I'm taking advantage of the opportunity to just let everybody <laughs> know. Molly knows all about it. Roger knows all about it. But it does have long-term implications because according to a Lake Advocate, there's more and more homeowners that would consider a two-story private walkway over open water to get to the party deck of their docks. I don't know of any specific proposals beyond this for Windermere, but there are some in the works for the chain of lakes. Uh, and it's obviously a development review board issue if we ever see the application, if it's approved by the county, but uh, but I'm doing my damnness to make sure it never comes to the town. And I appreciate the support of the members that have sent objection uh, emails and letters. We do not want this type of uh, construction uh, in Windermere. So, so Lloyd, can I ask a question? So is this a situation where you, you have a path through your yard to your boat dock existing now, and they want to do a bridge, a structure from their second story house to the top of their party deck? This this is uh, probably one of the few waterfront properties that does not have a dock. 
the previous mm -hmm. owner never put one in. They just put their, their, uh, they put their uh, boat up on the shore. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there are two viable alternatives at this property, but they want to only focus on being able for the princess to walk out of her kitchen and walk across this two-story bridge to get to the party deck. Ah, and they, yeah. they aren't required under county ordinances to evaluate, to consider alternatives, but mm -hmm. I'm working really close with Commissioner Wilson to force that discussion. Naively, I would hope all the parties of concern would get around the table and reach a solution, mm -hmm. but their contractor and their lawyer is, is basically stonewalling any other option. So just, it, just to explain too, the, the bridge part uh, goes over water. Mm -hmm. this, uh, yeah. the, the land route goes around the water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's it to be a little longer, but yeah. it it's a it's like a little bay that comes in there. So they want to cross the bay to the boat uh, dock, the the boat house instead of building or just walking around or putting a walkway around the water to get there, which would be a longer route. And it would and that route would be on you know ground level. Mm -hmm. But they have a second alternative, Roger, and that's just to extend, come off their, their pool area and go straight out. Yeah, that's go right out from the realtor, house. Right. Yeah, that's what the realtor for the previous owner had an application in for. Yeah, the, the normal thing. It's just yeah. they own this little peninsula, peninsula of land right. that's on the other side of the water. <laughs> and uh, so they want to use that for the boat, boat dock or, and so, uh, house. I appreciate everybody hearing me again. It's kind of. I, I guess. I guess the question, and Tony, Tony maybe uh, for you, um, does the town you can you can put in uh, letters of support or objection to the county, and uh, I guess it's the what's the other county name for the ordinance? Well, it's the Environmental Protection Division. The ADP, mm -hmm. uh, which would be in the comments that they would have to review before issuing a permit or denying a permit. So the town could, knowing about it, um, if they want to object to it, it's probably even most effective to um, object to it before a permit, you know, or before the plan actually gets approved and comes to the town. Well, the Butler Chain of Lakes Advisory Board also have sent, has sent in objections. So I guess, you know, I never thought to even bring it up to Robert uh, and I've heard secondhand, Robert, that, that you've had some feelings on this proposal. But does the town even make comments, or do you wait until it comes to the town for approval? Well, the problem is if, if they meet our land development code, uh, as far as setbacks and so on and so forth, and anything past that normal high water elevation, it's county. So um, our restrictions or our input's going to be limited. Um, but if we're able to, which we are, we can propose a letter of objection um, and send it to Orange County EPD to say, listen, here's the thoughts of the town council. We know you don't have jurisdiction over this portion. Uh, we just have jurisdiction over the landward portion, uh, but we can go ahead and put this on the February 8th town council meeting. And if you wanna present it to town council with some exhibits, and then I can draft the letter to uh, Orange County EPD in objection to them granting this permit um, for the two-story walkway. Okay. Yeah, that may be the most effective <clears throat> thing because uh, it would be before the permits even issued by the county and might. Yeah, there, there's there's been talk that they didn't meet the setback requirements of 50 foot, but supposedly their lawyer is saying it's not part of the house; it's part of the pier even though it connects to the balcony of a to be rebuilt home. The house is for sale right now, interestingly, but they plan to turn it into a rental if they can't get their ridiculous price they're asking for it. So what I hear you say, and, and then the other thing is that it, the height may exceed. That's both from, I'm blank on his name, the consultant, Brad. Brad Cornelius. Yeah, but you never know what can happen. So. The, strat the plan is to try to stop it before he even comes to the town of Windermere for a building permit. Well, I remember it was about to expire, but then Orange County APD notified the applicant <laughs> for the potential expiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so there's, a, there's a little too cozy of a relationship there. 
-hmm. And it took them six years to get six months to get the surveying done, a land, uh, a land elevation survey for the peninsula. So yeah, if it's something that you think uh, uh, that uh, if, if I can present it, I'd be more than happy to. Yeah, we have a lot of light agenda on February 8th, so I'll be more than happy to put you on there. And what date is that? February 8th. Uh, okay. Oh, February. Yeah. Just to, just to be clear, so I've, I pulled it up on Google Maps looking at the, at the property. That peninsula that is across the little bay, they're looking at putting the boat dock on the other side and then spanning that bay with a, an overhead... Uh, structure you got it yeah yeah they built it's pretty, the, hard to, it's pretty hard to visualize that you know the building they'll build on the peninsula tony is is basically i guess two stories the bridge yeah, comes from the second down. floor <laughs> second floor of the of the um i guess that's yeah more. Se second floor of the house over yeah. to the top of the boat house or or whatever the party house is yeah, Tony, I think if you're I'm looking at it too, I think it's it would be right, right from the left of the boat. You see the boat, right? Yeah. It looks like it comes from the point of the house right to the, the top of the sea on the crest, right? Yep. Yeah. So we'll provide you with the Orange County EPD permit and all the RAIs and stuff like that during the council meeting. I can get it from Liz Johnson or Neil okay. Thomas, whoever's in charge of uh, the you, permit process. Uh, Neil works for Liz. Liz is the one that's having the conversations with Commissioner Wilson. Uh, there, we had 14 uh, uh, residents submit objections. Uh, many of them live in Windermere. Okay. I sent a letter in. They said thank you. They'll put it in the file. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that uh, one question. They their ownership. You don't really own the water, do you? No, no. Now, some I've been told this is a whole sidebar. There are some lots that own the land underwater for a certain extent. Most yeah. of the lots, like mine, I don't. Well, there. Yeah, it's a real. It's very weird. Some of them they can go in like the your property line, your side yard. It can go like a hundred feet or more into the water. Mm -hmm. Well, the print, the thing I saw that you sent me, Lloyd. Their plan showed their property line seemed to own that water. <laughs> you know, the no, that's line. just that's just the projection of the setback. Yeah. Okay. They misdrawn it, uh, and they have to be twenty five foot from that side setback. The town of Windermere requires sixteen feet, but that's where you know the the standard dock and pier would go off from the pool. Yeah. Um, but uh, the more pressure that we can apply, the higher probability that that uh, some say it may end up uh, going to the county. Uh, um, uh, is commissioners, are they commissioners? Yes. Yeah, commissioners. Yes. Commissioner yeah. Wilson. It may well, end up going to the county commissioners, but who knows? But, you know, the weird part is, and I don't remember if you had any elevations in there, but the even the county, even the state says your boat dock can only be, I think, 13 feet high. And That's good. They meet the so, requirements. So people don't put roofs on top of those second decks because that'll be over 13 feet. And then and then I think, you know, even on a street, we have to have a clearance of 13 feet for a truck to get under a line or uh, anything. Mm -hmm. Well, they widen the pilings in order for a boat to get under it. I first thought it, thought it was going to require a river and harbors, you know, a, a 404 permit. But they they did that. But it's it's just an absurd structure. Yeah. Last thing we need are private bridges across open water. Mm. Okay. I just, I just looked up on the property appraiser. They do their property lines do go out into the water. So that's probably one of the situations where they own that. Uh, wow. But they're still subject to all the permitting requirements, regardless of who owns the the lake substrate. Well, I would think they'd, they'd have to get permitting approval from everybody now because yeah, they a, got they, they received water. they received the permit from the state. The state was very uncooperative, and that's who I started my career with with DEP. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've issued a permit. So mm -hmm. the second one is is the county, and typically those are in parallel. But the county is at least receiving the comments, and the commissioner's help has been very important. 
she seems based on the staffer uh, um, kind of taken back by this whole proposal. Sorry to take up so much time. Uh, okay. Robert, will, what do I do? Do I just uh, come prepared on the 8th or will I get a follow-up email confirming I'm on the agenda? Uh, you could so you could, you take this conversation as a confirmation that you'll be on the agenda on February 8th. I'll put you under special or special presentations. Okay. Um, and just send me whatever documents that you want to present to town council, meaning any elevations, designs, permits, um, anything that you want, and even the objection letters from the town Windermere uh, residents, and I'll be more happy to attach those to the uh, the agenda packet. Well, wow, you're talking a thick document there. Uh, do you typically get you to <laughs> you're typically talking about a PowerPoint presentation for me, just briefly kind of overview the proposal? Um, that that's fine if you want to do that. Um, you know. It, a picture is better than just explaining it to them uh, so they get a better feel for what they're objecting to. Um, but I even if you said I take that back, I think the PDFs would be a PDF would be better because all of my documents are PDFs and I'm, I'm actually out of town next week. So I'll put together a document uh, in PDF format. Uh, send, I'll send that to you. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there any action by long range planning that sh should or be would be appropriate? Uh, I mean, I think the direction would be to take it to town council. So I don't think there's a, I mean, if you want to take a position as LRP, but I'm not sure everybody's 100% fully understanding of what the actual issue is uh, yeah. for them to make an informed uh, vote. But I'll, I would leave that to you and the board. Um, I guess, you know, speaking for myself, I've been over there with my boat, looked at it, and I think I understand the, you know, what the what they're trying to do. So I'd be prepared to vote. You know, but yeah, what he's see. saying, I think, is that the county uh, council won't understand it without a presentation. No, 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 no. No, I'm talking about this. If long range planning wants to take a position now, that's fine. Um, I'm yes. just, I'm just not understanding. You know, as far as I know, that some of you have. This is the first time you're hearing about it. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm still finding it cold. Um, but if you guys are comfortable making a recommendation based on the information that was provided by Lloyd, um, then I have no objection to you making a recommendation. Yeah. Well, we certainly <clears throat> can. Uh, it just it would just be a recommendation that we whether we have a position on it at all. <laughs> if we have no position, we don't need to make a motion. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm up to speed on it, and um, I, I think that uh, I would be in favor of making a motion that we uh, support this endeavor to try to stop this from happening. Okay, so the motion would be to, to the town council to, uh, to oppose the construction of the two-story bridge portion. Okay, that's a good one. That sounds good. That sounds yeah. good. We're yeah, not, but, and there, we're not we, objecting to building a, a boat or a, a dock. Uh, where no, I'm not. Yeah. But the, yeah. yeah, the, the bridge is the issue, not not right. a dock. Yeah. Right. Okay. So would be that. Is there a second to that motion? A second. Okay, Frank, friends, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 I didn't hear any objection on Zoom. If there is, holler right now so we get it. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I just think it might help, you know, presenting it to the council that that we've discussed it. <laughs> so uh, now we're on to the simplest of all the items on the agenda: the boathouse yeah. discussion. <laughs> uh, and I guess my yes, right on. I had asked. Uh, you know, Robert Tony, I said, I, I don't think I could discuss it without a legal opinion from the, at least the town's attorney of who owns the darn things, you know. Yeah, um, legal opinion is that the town owns them. Uh, this is something that's been negotiated since, I think, 1985. <clears throat> and I have, a, you know, I can bring up uh, uh, the town attorney's letter from the time. Uh, but generally what happened was in 1985, uh, I think the town council was negotiating leases with the current tenants and those negotiations broke down uh, because one person refused to sign the lease uh, 
believe it was, I forget the guy's name, but it was, one second here. I think it was Mark Black uh, was the one that uh, uh, wasn't signing. So the council at the time determined, hey, let's go ahead and just end this discussion once and for all as far as a lawsuit. So they filed a lawsuit um, and to determine the ownership of those um, boathouses and or the access to those boathouses. Um, the boathouse tenants then decided to file a counterclaim. That counterclaim was tossed. Um, and prior to it going to a jury trial, the council decided to negotiate a 15-year lease with the current tenants um, with the understanding again that the tenants would relinquish ownership at the term at the um, end of that term that was 15 years that was 1985 1986 mm -hmm. so the first term was 15 years then in 2001 uh, the council determined um, to go ahead and enter into a what was initially a 10 year, but it was actually a 20 year lease uh, with the current tenants. So in 2001, they approved the current lease um, because it was for a first term of 10 years, but the tenants were able to, within six months, go ahead and renew the lease for an additional 10 years. So it was actually a 20 year lease. Um, oops, sorry. I just knocked out my daughter's headphones. <laughs> Yeah, I, I that's what I'd heard a twenty year lease. I didn't even know about the fifteen year one, but yeah, so that fifteen year one be prior to from nineteen eighty six. So that brings you to two thousand one, and then the town council is on determined to go ahead and enter into a twenty year lease with the current tenants. Did everybody uh, sign that? Yes, and in that lease, um, I'll show you the lease right now in section twelve. It says, at the expiration of the lease, leasee shall surrender the ownership and possession of the premises in good state and condition. So this is the area to where, you know, there's no misunderstanding whatsoever. And when asked, Jerry Fay was one of the original leasees. Um, he was asked at a town council meeting when this was brought up back in uh, last year, you know, what was the intent of the lease? at the time that you signed it and you said we would give uh, all rights um, to the town. Um, and when asked, okay, well, why are you here now? He's like, well, things are different. Um, and that really doesn't hold water, especially legally. Now this entire time, the, the boathouse tenants have never relinquished any um, litigation rights, whether it be via an injunction or if they wanted to go ahead and take it to court, they could have taken it to court this entire time. But they have it. And the reason why is because I don't believe that they believe that they have any legal standing whatsoever, because when they signed those leases, it was voluntary, um, you know, and it was negotiated in 85, 86. And then uh, it was again um, negotiated in 2001. Now, in 2011, as part of my onboarding, it was to take a look at the leases. So in 2011, when we took a look at the leases, um, because they were supposed to expire in 2011, we couldn't find where they um, went ahead and exercised their right to make it a 20 year lease. Um, so it seemed as though that the leases would have expired in 2001, but come to find out pretty much the day that we were having the town council meeting, Dorothy did find the signatures of the boathouse tenants within six months of the uh, initial term of the lease uh, to extend it to that 20 year term. So at the time in 2011, town council said, okay, you know, this is a 20 year lease. Then in 2016, Judy Black came to me and said, listen, um, you know, there's five years till the lease expires. Um, anyway, we can bring it to town council to see what they're willing to do. And in 2016, town council at the time was not interested in extending those leases. And that's when we started talking about lotteries, so on and so forth. Then we went into 2020, uh, December of 2020, this was two or actually three months before the lease is expired. Uh, I took it to town council um, with various options, you know, um, whether they wanted the leases to expire, whether they wanted to uh, extend those leases, or if they wanted to pretty much kick the can down the road for the new administration, not the new administration, but the new council members to decide this because there was going to be a changeover in 2001 in March. Uh, so at that time, it's decided to go ahead and start doing a month to month lease after the 2001 elections. 
So you had discussions in December of 2020, then you had, um, so this has been going on for a year as far as the negotiations, discussions, and, and controversy that is the boathouses. Um, I've been living with this for the last just year. For just for clarification, it's 2021, not 2001. You said it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 2001 was when the 20 year lease term started. Um, but in 2020, in December, we want to make sure that you know, we're trying to get some consensus in, uh, from council of what they want to do once leases expired in February, because I needed to give them, I believe, 30 days notice uh, to vacate the premises. Um, then in 2021, um, you know, we had several workshops and then it was determined, okay, well, let's go ahead and begin negotiating in good faith with the current boathouse tenants. That lasted until I would say, and Tony can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe October of last year. Um, so there was a good five to six months of negotiations with the current boathouse tenants. We even went and got a, um, a commercial rate appraisal to figure out, okay, well, you know, the prior tenants were only paying what started out to be $400 a year for the right to utilize those, um, uh, those slips. And at the end of the term, it was $640 a year. Um, and so the, 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 the council was like, okay, listen, that's, that's, that's nothing that we would be able, even agreeable to. And HPB even made a recommendation to go ahead and make it a 99 year lease. And that was nothing council at the time was going to agree to. So they reduced it again to a 20 year lease um, to do a fair market rate as far as um, how much it would be for the, the rental of those structures. Um, but then again, it came back to ownership, ownership, ownership. And then council finally said, listen, you know, we've already made the determination. Number one, we believe that we own them uh, based on, you know, the leases you signed voluntarily and legal counsel. In addition to that, you know, we've negotiated in good faith this entire time, believing that again, you know, you would forever and all times relinquish any right or whatever right you believe you have to own these boathouses. Um, so those negotiations fell through. Um, I know Councilman Martini was leading those negotiations with uh, George Polker, who was supposed to be representing all of the um, boathouse tenants at the time. Um, but come to find out, there wasn't any real communication with, I know Jerry Faye and his brother didn't have any communications with George relative to this, uh, this issue. So the council decided, okay, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and let the leases expire, which they have expired. And now we have a month to month lease, which the current tenants did sign. Uh, so it's a month to month lease. Um, and so the council has decided not to enter into a lease with the new, the existing tenants. Um, so what they want, long range planning, HPB and PM parks and recreation to do is, okay, right now we're looking at just doing a, um, what was proposed was to bring the boathouses up to a standard. And then once that standard is met, then we would create a lottery system, which would be a ran, uh, name randomizer, uh, one name per household, and through that process, select three names per slip, and then we would go ahead and um, offer that slip to whoever was chosen, and then go down. If one says no, then you go to two and go to three. Um, but the price was that was offered to the current tenants was 150 bucks a month for a single boathouse slip and then 125 a month for a dual boathouse slip. <clears throat> so the cost wasn't prohibitive. Um, it always came down to the ownership issue and uh, council from 2001 to 2011 to 2016 and 2021 has always had the same position. You know, the town never relinquished any rights of ownership to these tenants. Um, and so they finally decided, okay, this is this is it, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with the understanding that we're not going to renew the leases with the current tenants. So um, council member Davitt stated that, okay, so we're not leaving any stone unturned. I can pick it up from here. If you oh, okay, perfect, yeah. 
Yeah, so um, during the last council meeting, one of the things that came up is we were going to go and vote on um, issuing the lottery system to reallocate the boathouses to new <laughs> permanent tenants. One of the things that I was unsettled by is we didn't um, explore other options other than um, single tenant into each boathouse. Um, we didn't explore the possibility of potentially having a, say, a museum of the lakes or a parks and rec function within the, the boathouses uh, for all of the residents to use. So I wanted um, parks and rec, uh, long range planning and uh, HPB to kind of look through at those options before the council voted on going down the road of the lottery and release, just to make sure that we've got all of our uh, use coverages covered and we truly are executing um, in the best in interest of the uh, residents of Windermere. So that's where we sit. Um, we voted uh, that yes, we would push this back to the, the three boards and then within 60 days, we'd come back with uh, options if there are any or uh, positions from each of the boards did i yep. cover that all right robert yeah and and there is no option to where the council is looking at demolishing the structures um you know that was i think decided back in 1985 when there was a threat to do that mm -hmm. uh, but i don't believe there's any political will to move forward with demolishing the structures it's just a matter of okay here's what you have you have five boat houses um you can make them a static, you know, historical structures to where you just leave them. You can make them into a museum uh, that I know that council member David has seen in around the country, um, or, you know, or you may agree with the lottery system. It's, it's completely, you know, up in the air as far as what do you think would be the best and highest use of those properties. Um, if anybody has questions over ownership, I'll be more than happy to address those, but that issue has been resolved. And I believe that was resolved back in October, November of last year to where the council made the vote and said, listen, we're not going to go ahead and renegotiate with the current tenants. Uh, we're just going to move forward from here. Yeah, the one thing that I, I just didn't feel we had enough um, information <clears throat> on and the reason why I brought up the discussion during the last council meeting was we needed to evaluate if there's alternative uses other than the lottery. And that's where I think we had a little bit of... Uh, of a deficiency, so I wanted to get the input of the boards. Uh, thank, thanks for that update. Um, I, I have a perspective I'd just like to throw out there for long range planning to consider. Um, uh, uh, let's assume the town owns a property that seems to be settled. If there were no boat houses there, if there was nothing there but what but the water and the land that's there. What would we propose? Would we propose that the town build five boat houses and rent them out for, I don't know, what is it, 6,000 a year or whatever total? Or what, what would we propose? Because I think in the long range, I, I maybe don't personally agree with the council's position that they wouldn't tear down the boat houses, but maybe not. But right now, there's no public use of that public land that's attached to a park part of the uh, you know cypress tree boardwalk and it's across the street from a park and uh, it's owned by the citizens of the town basically that the land and and the bordering of the water I mean there could be uh, maybe lots of public uses uh, for it it's uh, so what we're doing if I was looking at that as if there were no boat houses there and the public owned it. I think what I'd be talking about is something like you said, Tony, maybe, maybe some, you know, uh, dock that the public could use, or um, if not, a, I'm not thinking of a boat dock necessarily, but a view dock, a little fishing dock for kids. It's sh pretty shallow water um, or just a scenic area of benches. I, I just can't imagine I mean, if the town's interested in building boat docks, boat houses for people, let's look at, there's land on Lake Bessie and Lake Down, and probably there's land on Lake Butler next to the boat ramps, and we could build boat houses for a lot of people. But is that is that what we would do, looking at it long range? Uh, 
So I'm just putting that perspective on it. I'm not going to comment on that. I'll leave it up for the uh, for you guys to negotiate, debate, yeah. or provide your input. Yeah. Well, I I I I, I kind of agree with Roger on that. I mean, looking at it that way is like if if that property was sitting there and there were no boathouses, would would the town go out and build five boathouses? And if the ownership issue has already been decided, and I believe it has, then uh, then the real question is is uh, would the would the council consider the option of having no boathouses there and having something else as part of the uh, as as part of the uh, uh, the use of that property? Because I, I think it's it's burdensome it, I'm, as I as I think about the idea of of the lottery system uh, and for all the homeowners to potentially benefit. That just seems like an incredibly burdensome process for very little return, and it seems like it's going to continue to uh, create uh, anxiety and issues that we're going to have to deal with. As you know, people aren't going to be happy that you know there's only five, and we've got a lot of residents in town that might want to get a shot at them. Um, I, I and and I don't have an answer. I'm just I, I'm just sort of agreeing that that I think we need to broaden our thought process on what could be done there um, going forward. The only, the only comment I will make is <clears throat> twofold. One, it's uh, it's in side of line to Bird Island. Um, and number two is if George Dubois was here tonight, um, he could tell you his nightmare uh, stories about living next to a lake access park. Um, you know, when you have people from all out of town coming in, swimming in the lakes, so on and so forth. You know, we are among the lakes as far as our name. Um, you know, do we really have access to the lakes with a lot of the areas and parks that we have in the town? No. Um, but I know that we do have a lot of issues with the parks that do have lake, ac lake access. Um, now, is that area really um, navigable? Um, you know, it's very limited to what kind of boats you can get in there. Um, but I know a lot of the concerns from the residents that live close by that area was to create another Bird Island or uh, Lake Street Lake Down issue. Yeah, that's not a particularly good swimming area from that perspective. It's quite mucky once yeah. you get your foot in the water there. Uh, so, Tony, you, you made a, I think you made, a, someone made a good point about the museum concept. I've seen that as well. And my thought for a while has been if you open up to a lottery, which is a neat idea, if you open up to a lottery, five people are happy, right? And and 500 are not happy, who today probably it isn't in their biggest issue that they're thinking about today. But some, if we make an issue of a lottery, we call attention to the fact that most people will not get it. So then you've got the issue of, how long is that lottery? How long does that last? Five years, 10 years? Do you go through this every three, four, five, 10, 20 years? But the other part is, I love the idea of you've got these historic structures. They do need to be fixed. They need to look probably better or at least safer. And would, would the combination of letting people be able to see them, <clears throat> what they look like and what they, the purpose they were built, historical piece, not unlike the schoolhouse, that's interesting. But then you do you extend the, I think it's the Rotary Park, which is to the bottom of the screen. You've already got a viewing platform there. I don't think that's ever been an issue where people are diving off and swimming and causing all the tomfoolery that George has to go through at the other dock. But if you were to extend that walkway and almost it almost becomes a walkway linking the boathouses, then you've got a couple things. You've got a museum concept. You've got a walkway concept. You now give public access to public land. Um, and five people don't control. Just thought. Um, I, I'm also a little concerned about um, building like uh, decking or a, um, a, a dock that we would end up being used to take people back and forth to Bird Island. It's, as you guys uh, already know. Uh, I, I can absolutely, I agree with you on that, Molly, for sure. I don't think we want to, we don't want to do something that's going to create more of a, more of an issue than, than already exists out there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, I, and of course, I was just thinking naively as, as, a, as a look over more than anything else, but I, your point is probably even if there's even if there's rails up, people are gonna dock up and jump up, mm -hmm. right? So um, do you think, Tony, that the council is taking, has made this statement that they don't wanna remove these boathouses because they were receiving a lot of pressure from residents, not just the five, but other residents saying, um, you, you can't tear those down there, you know, you got to keep them up and. Well, as I understand, these were all voted um, to be historical um, structures. So uh, the town, uh -huh. the town back in two, in 2000, correct me if I'm wrong, Robert, uh, the council at that time uh, approved the historic preservation board's recommendation and voted on it, that these uh, five structures are considered historical. Now, I looked in the state and national registry. They're not on the state or national registry, but um, I assume uh, Robert uh, can find the minutes of that, that town council meeting where these were voted to be historical. And that's what's driving, that's what's driving the inability to take them down. But that, yes. then, then there should be a sign up like there is for our other historical buildings in town. It, it, it's on the local historic registry. It's not on any uh, state national. or national uh, registry. They are, yes. HPB is working on creating a sign out there. Um, but again, it's it, it doesn't meet any standard that the state and or feds would probably uh, approve. Yeah, so the, the town hall, the um, schoolhouse, and the uh, Cal Palmer building are all in the national registry. I think yeah, from what you're saying, there's nothing restricting the town from taking them down. Nobody, no other agency is going to- No external complain. agency. It's just a, a vote of prior council that these are historic. Yeah, just that's, that's all. But you could, you could still, you could probably still uh, combine two of them you could you could build something if you wanted something for the public there it's just uh, it just seems strange to me it's public land but there's no public use for it uh with the boathouses there that's kind of where i was getting hung up and the reason i, I asked the question during right. the last council meeting and uh well the one boathouse at the far end it's going to fall down with one big storm, probably. It looks, it's almost done. The one next to the green roof? Yeah, yeah. the one on the farthest end there, yeah. Boat I house number five. Yeah. yeah. That's Jerry Faye's boathouse, and again, it's pretty much falling into the water, and that's a dual slip. So the first three that you have are single slips, and the second or the last two are dual slips, so you actually have seven slips. Oh, who knew? Yeah. Did Jerry uh, say what he thought had changed, by the way? No. So one thing I'm not sure we have considered is, you know, um, in my past life, um, we've done historic preservation by maintaining a sample of a structure. So, for instance, in a um, uh, Hickam Air Force Base, the base housing there was, was historic. Uh, we wanted to reconstruct the base housing. What we ended up doing was maintaining two of the houses as historic models and then demolishing the rest. I'm not sure we've gone down that road. Um, you know, so that's uh, just another another idea that I'm, I'm just spitballing here. Because, because you know, building docks, the, rebuilding these is not cheap. I mean, right. This is, I mean, you'll probably get into it and find out that the six by sixes coming out of the water are rotted and the floor is rotted and the, I mean, everything's gonna end up being replaced if you actually want to keep them. But just like the uh, schoolhouse. Yeah, that's, and we all know how gonna, much that's cost us. That was gonna be my follow on point, you know, as a, as a long range planning board, we kind of need to program that of what that looks like, a redevelopment schedule, things like that for these. Um, if we do take ownership and then provide leases to them, you know, we've, we've got to do the maintenance and upkeep of that in perpetuity. Why? Why? We've never done that before. And who, well, where, where is the liability with these two? Is the town responsible if somebody dies on one of these? No, the, the current uh, leases that were 
going to go to the general public, uh, it would be uh, from a period of three to five leases. We would cover the insurance for the structure itself, meaning that if a storm came through, then we would go ahead and rebuild it. Um, but the tenants would have to have uh, the adequate liability insurance. Uh, so if anybody were to get hurt within the structure or accessing the structure, and we also had conditions within that lease too, uh, as far as the type of uses. So if they were to use it as a jump off point or to um, you know, sublease it or use it for commercial uh, purposes, then they would lose that lease automatically. So you can like, tack one of these on to your liability insurance, like through your homeowner's insurance? They would have to buy a separate policy. They're not going to do that. I, I don't think you'll get an insurance company that's going to separate that. They, they do have them right now um, because that's part of the required current lease that they, the tenants currently have is that they have to hold liability insurance for the structures. Really? Huh. Okay. Or they have to show us that they have insurance on those structures. Well, that you, they could do. They can get the insurance for the structure <clears throat> with liability tied to it, but I don't think you can buy just liability on that. But I could be wrong. Anyways, yeah. It's, yeah. it would cost a lot of money for the town to get into the maintenance or upgrading or whatever restoring of these. I just want everybody to understand that. I mean, this is not a cheap day. The town might do just one as a ex well, example of what was there. I mean, Boathouse I don't. One, Boathouse one is in very good condition, and we actually did a like a, a ballpark figure, and it became with about thirty-five thousand dollars to rehab all five structures. Yeah, and you, and considering what you get on the lease, it doesn't doesn't seem to be particularly. <laughs> well, this isn't something where the town needs the money. I mean, uh, compared to what they're getting here. Um, no, the monies that would be collected would go to HPB. Yeah, it's, you know, when I when I look at it, and I look at the one you've got up there, and as I've looked at it before, it's really, it's right across from a park, and it's public land. And uh, I know there might be concern that people would use it as a jump-off point for Bird Island, but there uh, seems to be plenty of jump-off points considering the traffic on Bird Island. Now, I don't know, maybe there's other ways of restricting that. You know, you could you could put no launching of boats there, you know, on, on it and just restrict it from launching the boats if you, if you wanted to just make it park, park land. Um, it's, uh, I've, la I've launched my stand-up paddleboard from there. Uh, it's a handy place, but that's not very adequate either. <laughs> Uh, it's not very navigable through there, is it? Has anybody at, at, uh, at times it is. it's pretty shallow in there for sure. Yeah. yeah, the other negative is that a lot of people will park right in on the park grounds instead of parking at the designated parking areas and to launch, you know, their kayaks or visit that area. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen people launch jet skis there. Uh -huh. hmm. uh, I don't know how they get them in, but I guess you well, could. just manhandle it, you know. Yeah. You know, the early pandemic time frame. Yeah. I think everybody needs to think about it for a while. Well, we have 60 days. So yeah. we, we can bring I, it back to the that. next meeting. Um, you know, so, so brainstorm some ideas. But if we need to call a special meeting for me to meet that 60 day uh, deadline, uh, then we can do so. But I do have 60 days from the January town council meeting, which was sort of 30 days in almost um, to go ahead and make that recommendation to town council, either at a workshop and or a town council meeting. So is H, is the SOAR Preservation Board also doing a recommendation? Yes, and so is Parks and Recreation. Parks and Recreation has had a previous stance that they were in favor of the lottery system. Uh, they were just wanting to have one boathouse for uh, storage of canoes and kayaks and paddle boards and stuff like that. So um, they would just have like a, instead of an open air structure, it'd be a closed structure. So, um, you know, what you see at other areas where people would just go in, they'd have a keypad or something like that, and they would access their paddle boards so they didn't have to drive back and forth with it. So I hadn't verbalized this before, but I, I you know, the idea that a 
you know, a lottery would make these available to some group of five people doesn't seem very nourishing in terms of a value to the whole town. You no, know, it's a, it's the lucky five or yeah. or you could put it a price of highest bidder, but that even gets worse. <laughs> no, it, it would, yeah. you can't do it fair and equitable by doing highest bidder um, because again, the, the intent was to make it available to those people that do not have mm -hmm. um, lake access via boathouses. Um, They're just accommodating five people. I just go back to, if those things weren't there, I can't imagine the town would build five boathouses to have yeah. a lottery for five, you know, five residents to have a boat on, on the water. Uh, there's seems yes. to me they're better, you better public use for the land than, than a few boathouses. So we had a workshop on the boathouses with the town council and I asked the, the, the council what the goals of this were. My goals are, you know, historic preservation, um, accessibility and, and equity. And by accessibility, I mean for the entire town. I agree that, and that's kind of where I got hung up with the vote is I don't agree that a lottery with five selectees is equitable to the entire town. Um, that's why that that's when I you know started churning. Is there a better use for these, um, and therefore brought you all into the discussion with me? Yeah, that's valid because I can tell you that we never thought anything but lottery uh, ten years ago when this came up. So, and that was just so that maybe five more people <laughs> could have. <laughs> this experience versus just five. So, you know, but anyways, I think it's a valid yeah. thought process to see if, if we can make it so that um, more of the residents can have some benefit from this property in some way. Well, to be able to use it for, you know, kayaks and paddle boards isn't, you know, doesn't seem like such a bad use compared to motor boats, but, uh, I mean, we could we could restrict it just like Windermere Recreation Center. You, you're not allowed to launch a motorized um, yeah. vehicle off of the island. You can only use a kayak and a paddleboard, and that's something that we would be able to do as far as a restriction here as well. Um, but again, it's up to you guys as far as what recommendations you want to make, or if you want to pause and then think about it, and come back. Um, I'll leave it to LRP. And if you if you add something like you know non motorized launching you wouldn't have to build an actual ramp you might have to have something like a small dock you know where you can just put your paddleboard or kayak in the water um, and maybe you'd have to build a parking for four cars across the street i mean that that's not that big a deal at least it'd be a a public a public use and wouldn't add to more ski boats and jet skis out uh, on bird island or anywhere else so why are you thinking only four cars because i was i thought you were talking about anybody who want has a um a kayak or a paddleboard and they want to store it there i thought that's a park somewhere well, well storing i guess that's their thing my my point is just a launching spot i guess if you uh, if you're you. storing things you might need more but still not everybody that stores a kayak there would be out at the same time. Yeah. But but what well, yeah, maybe it's more than four cars. I was just thinking of people that launch a kayak or a paddleboard. It's pretty spread out in time. I've never seen a lot of them. It's it's uh it's a good it's a good place for launching something like that. And if the and at times that is very shallow, but you can still get a kayak yeah. paddleboard. Oh, yeah. And then when you're you know, that's close. that's very doable there. It'd be it'd be nice. I'm, yeah. I agree. And it'd, it'd be, be part nice. of the. It, it could tie in more to the public park. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and, people, uh, are gonna, people are going to ride their bikes to get there, or walk. A lot of people have are on that side of town can walk to get there too. So. Right, and if you're stored, I don't know. I, I you know you could, if you're allowing people to store their paddle boards, or uh, kayaks. Maybe you only need three boathouses or something. I mean, you could charge for that just to store them, but uh, I, I don't know how you'd man manage that. I'm, 
more thinking. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd be concerned about the liability. Yeah. But if you're just launching from there, you're not liable for anything. No, I was just saying the storage and yeah, I don't, I don't know if we want to be in that business. Well, that's a good, unless it's a real public service, it's not making it, it's not for making money. I don't know if that's a necessary public service. No, no, no. What I meant by that is just the practice. I use the word business as synonymous. It could be a nonprofit business. Yeah. Uh, you can, you're concerned that everybody has a code or a key that, that has access to that same space where everybody's sharing their storage. Mm, of, yeah. Of, uh, yeah, my paddle board's gone or I slipped yeah. getting to it. You should have yeah. made this deck wider and yeah. 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 Good point. If yeah. you just have an improved uh, launching site there, if you want for paddle boards and kayaks, you just need a small area that you can get out right. a couple feet in the water without sinking in the muck, you know, something like yeah. that. That, that, I mean, that certainly sounds like a right, right way to go. And, and Tony, that still gives, maybe gives us the opportunity to save one for that, for the historic museum concept too. You want to keep that. So everybody yeah. gets to use it. Boathouse number one is in really good condition. So yeah. if yeah. that was going to be the direction, then that would be the boathouse. And I believe that is one of the original, if not mm -hmm. the original location of the first boathouse. And that's next to the park, that little, that little uh, viewing park. Is that rotary? Right. Right. That right. park that tree. Ties in nice. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the Where's the old cypress tree now? In that, that's right in there. That's a walk right there. Yeah. 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 It was out to the cypo. Old, right. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. right there. And uh, and I've seen you know people sitting out. There. I've walked out there. People sit there. I've seen some kids fishing off. I went fishing there this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> catching. But uh, and so you know, tying tying some of this property into park. I mean, to me, it's part of the park. Well, this this is a, I, I I like the sound of this a lot more from the standpoint of I I think we'll get a lot more public support for that kind of a concept sure. and and that type of usage is fairly uh, it's fairly quiet. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not unusual to have a place where you can launch something but not motorized vehicles. So it yeah. might also bring more people to that park so the park is utilized more. Mm -hmm. True. Good. Well, does someone want to? I don't know if everyone's in agreement on this or not, if, if something on that concept, but a way to it find to out. Be a consensus. I mean, phrase, I, phrase, I, a, I, phrase I, a motion and we'll. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, we may want to ask Parks and Rec. You know, they've given quite a bit of thought to something like that. Yeah, I mean, each individual committee is supposed to come up with a recommendation, yeah. and then we bring it to town council as far as, you know, their brainstorming uh, workshop of what they want to do with it. And then um, the people from each committee could attend that workshop or be observers or something. Yeah, well, they, I mean, they participate in the discussions, and I can bring each and every recommendation. Here's what LRP believes. Here's what HTP believes, and this is what PNR believes. Yeah. Um, and is there a compromise in those three decisions? But you guys are your own separate entity as far as what type of recommendation that you guys want to make. <clears throat> okay. So it's up to you if you're comfortable or not. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is there, is there a restriction of the board members talking amongst the board members, um, much like the, the elected officials uh, with the sunshine laws? Is there? A yes, yes, you, you, you can't, if you're part of the LRP, you cannot discuss LRP issues outside of the long range planning meetings because you're making recommendations to town council. Now, can an LRP member talk it over with a uh, parks and recreation member um, and or an HPB member? You know, we've done that in the past. I know Parks and Recreation and the Tree Board have worked hand in hand in the past, but we made sure that, you know, there wasn't any gray area and we've advertised those meetings. Um, so that is something that can happen if you want it to happen. But as far as internally, um, you'd have to follow the Sunshine Laws. So... Will there be an opportunity once all these committees um, have their list of options that they, instead of just the pre presentation to 
um, the council, what if there was a workshop where they all came and brought those ideas and the council was there and any of the public, and then maybe find something that works better. Be you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't have any objections to that. I mean, we would do via Zoom again, and then we can have a uh, three-party uh, workshop between PNR, HPB, and LRP for all of you to present your ideas, options. I might not be able to articulate them as well as you guys have tonight. Um, so that is something that we can consider, and I think it's a great idea. Timing-wise, Robert, um, the workshop right before the 60-day point, do, what, what date is that? That would be February 24th. So we could have a, you know, a workshop on the 24th. Yeah, let me check my calendar. Pull mine up as, as well. Uh, February 22nd. 22nd, okay. Yeah, that would be the workshop date then. So unfortunately that, is two days before our next meeting. So I don't know if there's, if you wanted to have a out of cycle LRP meeting. 24th is a, it would be an LRP meeting. The 24th is an LRP meeting, but the next town council workshop before the 60 day point is um, the 22nd. And I, and I would need a recommendation from the respective boards um, the Thursday prior to, so I believe that would maybe be the 18th. Robert, is it is it legal for us to um, have a subcommittee meet and come up with a recommendation? Or it would be a recommendation of the subcommittee, not a recommendation of the Long Range Planning Committee, but you would still have to advertise your meetings and take minutes of those meetings. Well, is anyone comfortable making a motion of what, what we think our ideas are now? I think, I think we have a consensus, pretty much. Um, I could take a stab at it. Take, take a stab. We can, take always, a stab at it. we can always revise it a little before, before we vote. Okay, so I would make the motion that the LRP committee recommend conversion of one boathouse to a park uh, associated um, launch site for non-motorized uh, watercraft. So just, 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 just for clarification, so you keep one boathouse for historical, historical um, purposes and then remove the other ones, and that would be a launching site for paddle boards, kayaks, canoes, stuff like that, non-motorized? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really addressing removing the other ones, but I, think, okay. but I, would, but I would agree with that. I would make that part of the motion. To, to okay, that, that's, the that's what the that's what the discussion was about, and I was just trying to clarify if yeah. that was that that was the motion to to remove the others, and leave the one. Frank, can I ask you for clarification? I, I I can't vote, but I can ask a question. I think so. Is is the is the intent that the one structure that would be left would be actually a working or used for the launching of the paddle boards? as opposed to any type of historical marker, which would be a different use, I think. Or would you just launch, you have a space in that open space where those four other buildings were, the, that would be open space for people to launch. Their yeah, I, I think the, the launch wouldn't have to be and probably wouldn't be in the building. Yeah. Uh, you'd have just an, all you'd need is a little improved uh, spot could be near it or next to it, where you can just launch into the water. The que that doesn't meet the question of storage at Parks and Recreation. Right, that, but that's, that doesn't have to be ours. Right. No. And, I, and think that, yeah, that, I think that was the point we're, we want to make is that if, 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 if we as a group are saying, we're, we're not promoting, we're not interested in the storage piece, but we're interested in keeping one of the houses, then we would be interested in keeping one of the houses for 
X and we'd have space where the other houses were for facilitating the launch. Right. I think that's what you're- So so it could be like the the schoolhouse where people can go up and walk around this this and read a, a a panel that tells you what the you know when this uh, boathouse came and maybe look inside i don't know but it'd be like the schoolhouse right yeah. right right yeah. and it could be open you know for some official kind of you know business right. or something or if i don't know it, it, maybe it would come if that's where you want to store kayaks and paddle boards uh, i think it'd leave that to parks and recreation i don't Personally, I have a feeling on storing things there, but uh, sorry, sorry, sorry for, to Frank. I didn't mean to interrupt him because again, the the motion would die for lack of a second because of the the longevity of the discussion and stuff like that. But then the motion should have had a second before I interrupted. But um, I was just trying in my head figure out what the actual motion was. So yeah, um, if you want to reiterate your original motion and see if there's a second for future discussion or to revise your motion or just to uh, come up with a new motion. Uh, could you maybe do the lack of a second. Frank, could you just re kind of- um, Yeah, I think I would revise it. Rephrase I, it. Yeah, I would revise it to retain, the motion would be to retain one of the boathouses as a historical site and um, configure the remaining sites, you know, remove the remaining boathouses and convert the remaining sites to a launch area for non-motorized watercraft. I'll second that. Okay. Um, my only point in discussion, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have to have the entire remaining area for launching. I guess it'd be all right, but that wouldn't interfere if you put up bench or something, a view, a view bench or something along the property. I guess yeah. you could still launch, launch wherever it's suitable to launch, but you might want to plant some vegetation, et cetera, there and have a designated launch site, you know, where you can get in the water. It's quite mucky if you just walk in that water. Yeah. There's, you, you know, it, it's never very navigable ever yeah. even i mean sometimes you can't get a boat in and out of there a motorboat a lot of times yeah no. so at at best it's marginally navigable yeah for a motorboat so i guess i guess the, the motion would, on leaving the one would be to just you know, the remaining would be uh just a public use area with with a design some designated launch area for non-motorized uh, craft. Yeah, that's general uh, enough, I agree. Right, yeah, I, 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 I'm in favor of that. Okay, all right, so who, who wants to second that? Uh, oh, it's a good point. Well, I guess Lloyd's uh, voting. Well, up. first is Frank is in, in agreement with that, he can modify his motion and if I'm in agreement, I can, uh, my second can stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure I can express it, <laughs> but I, I agree with what was said. Okay. Well, let me let me try to phrase it. <laughs> and New motion. What, what you said, you, so I think what you said is we'd retain one boathouse. Do we need to designate which one? It's uh, the best. <laughs> Number one. Number one, okay, we does we would retain number one boathouse um, as a historic, you know, historic boathouse as a historic boathouse um, with uses uses to be decided by the town. The remaining boathouses would be removed. There would be some designated area for launching of non-motorized watercraft. And the remaining uh, area would uh, function as public public park and improved as desired by the town. I would second that. Mm -hmm. So that was, your, that was your motion. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> is is that your motion, Frank? Or it is. Just want to... that, that's ex that's exactly what I would have said. <laughs> All right. Well, I need I need it to be something that you are actually saying as far as a motion. Um, so if if you want to just um, you know say that the first motion died for lack of a second, then just create a motion based upon what Roger just said. Um, you can say, well, I make a motion based upon what Roger just spoke about, and then get a second, and then go from there. Okay. Except I already had done a second, so. It didn't die. This was discussion, so now it's okay. just being modified. And if Frank's okay. okay with that, then I I would also be okay with it. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with the modification. And Molly, you're as well. And I am, a, and as well, yes. Okay. All right. It may not be perfect, but it's getting close. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion, or are you willing to just go ahead to a vote? All right, no discussion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And is there any objection? I, I asked that because it could be easy to miss. <laughs> no yes. objections. And so uh, I guess, Robert, as the parks and recreation already met on the subject? They met on the subject some time ago, um, but they're going to be meeting about it in February. Okay. Um, so we'll see what the recommendation is. I can always provide them with the recommendation of LRP is. Yeah, that's what I think. It, it might help give them our recommendation and they can work, maybe go from there. Yep. Good idea. I, th I think, Robert, what we're also going to need is uh, HPB to buy in on creating a representative vote house instead of designating all five as historic. Understood. Okay. That's, all, that's all I had on the agenda. Anything, uh, anything else? Uh, any, new, any new business? <laughs> okay, if not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn and like to thank you all for uh, coming and giving some Deep thought to this. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. A meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the help. Thanks, Thanks for the help on this, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Great discussion.